Black Writers After Hours. Annette Rhys Dunn has had a colourful career singing the blues and opera, working with stars such as Andrew Lloyd Webber. Her love for music is matched by the joy she finds in writing, recently realised in the publication of her children's novel, Dream the Red Earth. I started our interview by asking Annette where the music came from. Well, my mum and my nan um, were very, they were opera lovers. Mm -hmm. And my nan had an old gramophone, we're going back hundreds of years now, (laughs) and um, she used to play records by Caruso, mm. and you won't know who this is, but my mum liked a singer called Diana Durbin. It okay. was kind of crossover operatic style. Mm-hmm. But my mum also used to sing around the house, and she used to sing um, Un Bel D, which is One Fine Day from Madame Butterfly. Mm. And I always liked to copy what she was doing. She would never have gone public or on stage or anything like that. It was just in right. the house. Yeah. So I really liked that kind of singing. And when I was about 12, it would be, there was a choir in Stockport called the Maya Choir. Mm-hmm. And it was quite well known. And, and um, they took, you know, singers from schools. Right. And I got sort of a kind of training then. Mm-hmm. But by the time I was teenage, I s- suddenly f- discovered uh, Billie Holiday and mm-hmm. somebody lent me an album with uh, women blues singers on it. And I suddenly realised there was a whole different world out there, bearing in mind that my sister and I, like a lot of young, well, a lot of black women and men of my age, Mm -hmm. we were the only black girls in our school. Yeah. Really in the town, you know, the immediate area where we lived. Mm -hmm. So seeing singers of that colour and hearing those sounds Mm. was really amazing to me. Mm -hmm. I carried on liking the classical side though and eventually um, I auditioned at the Royal Northern College which was so many years ago it was then called the Northern School of Music. Right. I got accepted Mm -hmm. and um, I sang a ridiculous song that wasn't really suitable for me. It was supposed to be a miller in, and um, what, how the the, stu- the corn was ground, mm. and um, it, it must have looked ridiculous. This funny little <laughs> black girl singing, <laughs> but anyway, the singing was nice, and I got accepted, but I couldn't go, right? Because the finances weren't there, right? Okay. Um, but then um, I left school at sixteen and did an art. A foundation course because mm-hmm. I liked art and sculpting, mm. and met uh, my first husband, mm-hmm. and we formed um, a blues uh, group called the Blues Train, mm-hmm. and I also sang with a blues guy called Alexis Corner. I went on tour with him, mm-hmm. but in my mind, I still liked the challenge of the classical. Music, right? Yeah. Um, I did quite a lot of gigs, made uh, albums. I was on the first pressing mm-hmm. of Jesus Christ Superstar. Wow! Um, I, I played. <laughs> I sang "The Maid by the Fire." Had to be auditioned by Andrew Lloyd Webber mm. at his flat with a little white uh, grand piano, mini <laughs> grand piano. My former husband, he sang the role of Caiaphas, and he had a very big voice even though he he was a blues singer Mm. um went on to do all sorts of gigs toured scandinavia with the blues Wow! but then i was still in my mind i was still writing poetry Mm -hmm. and by the time it got to the late 80s -hmm. um i answered an advert in the i think it was the evening news for, for poetry wanted from this common word culture word place <laughs> which i'd never really heard of yeah and i was privileged enough to have two of my poems published in talkers through dream doors and that's when i met mm-hmm. pete mm-hmm. kalu um i found that i couldn't have my children and a singing career so i did a mm-hmm. degree um be and 
taught dance and English okay. and drama. Okay. Um, because my then my marriage broke down, mm. and writing became something that was quite a nice outlet. You yeah. know, in, in a lot of ways. Mm-hmm. Um, then really, I kind of drifted around, and I did some stories at, at a writers' group in Stockport, which was. Mm-hmm all white apart from me. Mm. Not that it made any difference. It was just a way of writing. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, the the opera became quite important. I started having singing lessons Mm -hmm. um, with somebody who was a singer at the Royal Northern College. And my daughter, Kyla, she started out as a classical singer, but she's now a blues singer, an international blues singer who is still professional. And, in fact, I'm looking after her kids at weekend because she'll be in Norway. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> I'm always there. Yeah. But, um, yes, I mean, the, the, the writing, I think, words and music to me came, came together. I mean, I, I was in collaboration with Hazel Roy, who is a theatre um, director who has links with um, Nepal, Mm-hmm. And okay. um, we did a a show in Nepal in the International Kathmandu International Theatre Festival wow. in 2008, mm-hmm. and it was um, an anti-war eloquent protest. It was called. We 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 got together with two young male actors. The mm-hmm. four of us did, mm-hmm. and then a couple of years later, we wanted to go back and do something else. Mm-hmm. And I thought about words and music. And Nina Simone came into my head. Mm. And so we collaborated on a one-woman show, wrote about her involvement with the civil rights movement. And I played Nina, and Hazel was um, the kind of uh, commentator, you know, the narrator. So that, to me, is still music and words, Mm. and the words that Nina used were very powerful um, yeah. and through her voice you Definitely, know yeah, yeah. um i ha- i've written a few songs as well and so there's always been a, a combination of the two really even though it sounds mm. quite weird you know opera and poetry but um well it's like this storytelling yeah. it is mm-hmm. yes yeah. and there are two um operas which i think represent that Nabucco is one Mm -hmm. by Verdi and the song of the Hebrew slaves is a big chorus and that was a kind of um, uh, how would I put it it was a statement that was made through the chorus without it being politically recognised you know it was Mm. a sort of undercover one Mm -hmm. and um, yeah the, the other one oh yes Tosca which mm-hmm. is another opera, and that was a lot to do with what was going on at the time mm. in Italy and at a protest about the political situation. And quite a, f- a, a few of, you know, opera um, arias and choruses often are, you know, the words being a lot more than just a fat lady singing. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. During all that time, I had, uh, as I was with Pete's um, group, yeah. started writing um, a book for children. Mm. And this is a long time ago. Mm-hmm. And it, I finished it and not really knowing 
what to do with it. I, you know, I tried agents and I tried sending it and I got very nice replies that it was beautifully written. But mm-hmm. of course, there's nowhere for it to go because there's no platform at that time. Right. So I left it for years. And then a couple of years ago, I decided to have another look at it. Mm-hmm. And I hit on the idea through Pete that it should really relate more to today's um, young people because it was set in 1974 where there's no emails and no Mm -hmm. anything, no social media. Yeah. So I bolted onto it the story of a girl who was in COVID Mm -hmm. times who was separated from her mother Mm. and that led into her finding um, some pages writing about a child in Africa who had come to England and was separated from her mother. Right. And so the story entwines with the two of them. Mm. And it seemed to make it fit. It was mm-hmm. I, f- I felt then that I could finish it mm. after so many years of not bothering. And it c- quite quickly I managed to, to finish it. And, um, and I indie published it with Silver Quill. Mm-hmm. Publishing because my sister had done that right previously with two two books mm-hmm. and um, so really um, it was so nice the talkers through dream doors mm-hmm. had always been a kind of pedestal although it was so many years ago mm-hmm. and as I I think I wrote in in my bio that it, it kind of opened a door for me for to walk through to to write the Dream the Red Earth, which is the yeah. little, little book that I finally managed to, <laughs> to Oh, no, finish. well done. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's great. Yeah, thank you. Um, just so much in there that I'm curious too, about. Too much, and yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's wonderful. Um, what for you? I mean, maybe it's, it's probably a hard question or maybe that's not just like one answer, but what... The hi- what was the highlight for you from all of that? It's difficult because I'm obsessed with my fabulous kids. Yeah. So in between <laughs> all that, I think the writing is the main thing mm-hmm. that I really wanted to do. Mm. And it's given me a real sense of closure that I've actually managed to get this thing out. Mm-hmm. But I do love the challenge of singing either mm. blues or opera and I'm still doing it mm. you know I'm going to a rehearsal tonight over in Liverpool okay. I sing with a with a, an outfit called Opera Viva and I also sing sometimes with City of Manchester Opera I've done mm-hmm. solos and chorus and, mm. and I was at Stockport Plaza a couple of weeks ago singing okay. um, sort of bluesy type stuff mm-hmm. um, with my daughter you know, once you um, you start singing, you have to be dragged off with a yeah. hook. <laughs> you know, you can't stop. It's just something that. Oh, and so lovely! You can do it with your daughter. Like and yes, yeah. And she's kind of followed in your footsteps, really, touring and everything. That's yes, excellent. Yeah, she's done really yeah. well. Oh, yeah. Oh, wonderful. Um, so, with all the experiences that you've had, um, and in the different sort of media, creative mediums. Um, is there a piece of advice you'd give to a young creative, whether they're interested in poetry or becoming a singer? What's kind of maybe one thought or ritual or something that kind of kept you going? If it's your passion, mm-hmm. if it's something that you can't put down, mm-hmm. then that's where you should go, really. Mm-hmm. Because you, you can't be happy mm-hmm. if you're not doing the thing that really makes you feel like yourself yeah and I think for writing it's just sitting down and as Pete always said you just write don't worry about where it's going just sit down and write and yeah. and concentrate later on on the, the bits that need sorting out but, yeah mm-hmm. um, as I said I um I always write physically write in a book a diary most mm-hmm. days mm-hmm. And I can look back and see, you know, the wasted time or the, the nice things. Or, you know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, mm-hmm. yeah, I think that's quite good to to have a, still have a pen yes. in your hand. Although, of course, we, we, we do write on, on tablets. And yeah. 
something about the tactile experience, I think, yeah, of yes. pen to paper, yeah. And yeah. also that we grew up without mm-hmm. computers, mm. you know, so we, yeah. we've still, I've still got one foot in, in the olden days. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, I st- I've always like loved writing pen to paper and still do. So, Good. Um, <laughs> um, the books come out. So, what's next? I'd like to write um, a poetry book for mm-hmm. children, and I'm thinking mm. of another another book that's kind of not an autobiographical book, mm-hmm. but one that concerns an element in my family which I'd like to explore okay. more in fiction. Right, but that's a, that's a slightly bigger um, intention, really. I don't know, you know, whether okay. that. Okay. Okay. Well. Well, I've, I mean, I've still got to do something with this little one. I've not really launched it or anything. And, right. And I th- and the people that have read it have been mainly adults. I'm still waiting for a child to review it for me. Okay. <laughs> but they're all saying how nice it is. And, yeah. And it should be in schools, you know. So in, in getting it into schools. So we don't know. We'll see. Okay, well, we wish you the best of luck and yeah, thank you very much, Jeanette. Oh, thank you. Here's this episode's writing prompt. Take your pen for a walk. This writing prompt is to sit for 10 minutes, see what comes up. This is a Culture Word production. Thank you to our funders, The Space and Arts Council England, recorded at Silver Lining Music Studio.